Hey, welcome. Jay Nicholas here at the Caddis Fly Shop. Uh, a lot of stuff going on here today, so it might be noisy in the background. But it's been a while since I've tied a fly for folks, and I'm going to start out with a, uh, a really fun, uh, I'll call it an Alaska King Salmon Fly. But you know, this is going to work for all kinds of fish all over the world, uh, from Chile to Africa to who knows where. So we're going to zoom in uh, pretty quickly here and get started. Thank you for joining us. So here we go. I have a Pro, Sp Pro Sport Fisher 4040 tube, and I've cut about a half an inch off the back end. But this is where I'm going to have my hook stationed, and I'm going to get started. So I'm not at all organized here. I'm going to be doing some improvising, but this fly is called a three salt. And where that name comes, that, that name implies a big steelhead, or it could be a Chinook that has been out in the ocean for three growing seasons, which would make it a four-year-old. And the uh, point is, this, this is a fun fly. It's, it's uh, themed in a blue and chartreuse. Um, and I'm tying on the Pro Sport Fisher system here, and I'm, see this means I don't know what, I don't remember what I'm doing. I'm going to tie a butt station here. This is, this fly is going to have a butt station and a shoulder station, which is in keeping with uh, the intruder style. Uh, and of course, you know the drill. Intruder. The intruder is a name of a class of fly or a genre of fly that has been um, modified ton uh, to where now it's hard to tell if people should or should not be applying that name to the pattern. I've got a a cactus, chartreuse cactus chenille for the butt. We've got a really nice uh, marabou, chartreuse marabou hackle here. Now this fly is going to be weighted. It's on a tube. Um, it's going to be weighted. Actually going to be weighted a fair amount. Uh, so you can fish this. So, so you will get some uh, you'll get adequate penetration in some swift flowing water. Now this thing is not, it's not weighted a lot. See, tube flies by their nature, if you were to tie this same fly on a shank, the weight of the shank would add a lot to it. Uh, so uh, if you didn't add weight to this, it would be almost buoyant. Now, after that, beautiful little marabou. I've got some uh, Lady Amherst tail fibers here that I've cut off and I'm going to distribute them around this bed station and I'm just going to put a couple fibers. Ooh, lost one. There it goes. A couple fibers there. These, I love the Lady Amherst tail fibers. They are, they're so buggy. They're so beautifully marked. And yeah, they're kind of spendy, but you know what? They really, you think about the Atlantic salmon flies, that uh, the, the genre of Atlantic salmon flies are, those flies are so intricate and had materials from 20 or 30 birds in one fly. And they literally would, uh, and, and you've seen some of the tricks, you wind a material on with three turns and then you unwind two turns. Take your next piece of material, wind it on with three turns, and you unwind two turns. And I learned this from a book that my 
dear friend Guy loaned me. And uh, it's, it's a technique that we, we use here to reduce on bulk, but it's far less critical in what we're doing than it is when you're tying those Atlantic salmon flies. Uh, I'd say in comparison, a lot of our flies are very crude or very Spartan or very primitive. I don't know what the right word is. Okay, so now I'm going to put on a, uh, uh, this is not a schloppen, this is a saddle feather. And I'm just going to put it on at the base, the front end of this um, butt station. And all it's going to do is add a little firmness uh, how about the uh, substance, a little bit of substance to the rear station. So with the, with the uh, cactus chenille behind the marabou and the saddle hackle, and, and shopping wood works just fine here, the saddle hackle in front, uh, it will reduce the tendency of that rear station to just fold in on itself and disappear. And one of the reasons I like to use a saddle here is that the saddle's a bit shorter than, uh, it's a little less webby than a real, let's say I'd put a real bulky uh, shopping feather there, it would kind of cover up some of that beautiful Lady Amherst, so cover up some of those beautiful highlights. And we don't want to do that. So now, have a beautiful piece here of uh, Lagerton um, flat braid in a chartreuse. Uh, I'm sticking with the chartreuse theme here and a substitute would be um, uh, flat braid and a uh, good time, good time to put on a little bit of super glue. I could have put some on earlier. I should have put some on earlier. But you know, it's going to be okay. Okay. You know, I enjoy coming down to the shop here to tie. Get a chance to see my friends here and some of the folks that wander in on a daily basis to pick up things or just have a conversation with friends. So, the, uh, and I know I'm repetitive here, but one of the ideas behind these intruders is that you, um, you got a fly here, and you got a fly up here. You got, in, in essence, two flies, but you, more substance, less bulk, less water resistance, less uh, difficulty in lifting it from the water to cast. Hey, here we, we're back the third time. The third tries magic. So first time I made the body too long and I forgot to put the weight on. And I took the hackle off and I got the weight on, but I realized I didn't have enough space left. So I'm just showing you, I'm being honest. Sometimes you have to, you have to go back. So I took half the body off. Here is my tungsten raw weight. This is the extra large size. It actually weighs uh, 13 grain, uh, 18 grains. It weighs a little bit more than your um, a double pupil, your large double pupil lead eyes. Tungsten raw weight. They are awesome. So basically, I put the body on, stop my thread, uh, put the tungsten raw weight on restart my thread and here we go we're back at it and I, I uh, you know I think it's important as tires uh, the more experience you have the, the, the you certainly realize that you don't always get things right the first time and sometimes if you don't get it right the first time you're better off to just go back and do it again now I'm just winding this back behind the raw weight and then in front 
just have a nice little bump there. Nice color, nice density, and that uh, that raw weight is going to let us get down very nicely. Okay, now I'm going to get uh, the front of this thigh is going to start out blue, and you don't just order blue marabou for goodness sakes. You have uh, kingfisher blue, and you have uh, silver doctor blue, and you have fluorescent blue, and you have. I think what I've got here is I've got a fluorescent blue, and I'm going to fall with a silver doctor, and I might even put some purple on the facing. Get a little bit of a bit of my fluorescent blue here. So when you're, fish, you, you're fishing, the thing that's, uh, I put the extra large raw weight on there. Whether you're fishing Alaska or any place, uh, you will find that it makes a difference whether you're fishing out in the current. If you're trying to go under heavy current seams, uh, if you're trying to get down into slots, or if you are, um, if your if your swing is hanging down in uh, in soft water, and if you're hanging down soft water, then you probably wouldn't, would probably, you definitely wouldn't want to have that that raw weight on there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit of craft fur to this fly. And that's going to allow this fly to keel. So this crafter I, I took, this is a, I think this is a light, this is a bright green. You have kind of a yellow chartreuse and this is a bright green. I like this color. Can't go wrong with a chartreuse. But this uh, is just one of my favorites. How are you? So I'm going to put on a, that was a flow blue. Now I'm going to put on just a hint of uh, crystal flash. And sometimes in Alaska, people want a lot of flash. Um, and there are different thoughts on flash. Some there's one thought is that we're fooling ourselves by putting on flash that uh, when the fish is underneath the fly, they can't see it anyway. Looking up. Um, I go back and forth, but I like I like to put a little bit of flash on this fly, and I'm when I get to it, I've got my uh, and I could use uh, that happens to be a crystal flash. I could use a um, I like to use the uh, the new chroma flash as well. Uh, I didn't see it within my reach, but that's a very nice. The Chroma Flash and the Helix Flash, uh, they're very, 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 very nice. When you, can't, when you can't remember which drawer you put them in, sometimes you just reach for your old, good old Crystal Flash. I'm trying to get those little stray pieces of marabou free. Okay, so we're getting, I'm going to roll this fly up on its side. 
tie this side in. And this material uh, is very grippy. It's not slippery. So these eyes, you know, when you're tying with a uh, natural jungle cock, sometimes you face them forward and bend the stem back and you go to all sorts of measures to make sure you don't lose the, lose the eye. This one, you tie it in there, you're done. So we've got our jungle cock, uh, pro sport fisher jungle cock tied in there. I have a nice little cone. Let's see if I'm going to be able to slide this on with the material I have left. Yep, we got it. Okay, I'm going to slide this off. Yeah, uh, Slide this off the tube, and there we have that just barely the right amount. I am so lucky of my tube there, and I'm going to just barely touch this. There we go. We made it. This is a beautiful Chinook steelheady um, pike, muskie, perch, bluegill, you name it. Uh, hey, thank you. Thank you for coming and watching. Uh, it's been a while. I've had fun uh, doing this and hope you've had some entertainment in the meantime. Hope to see you again.